Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look alternative at alternative minimum tax part three of five. It means part one and part two are completed. Make sure to view them before you see part three. This topic is dreaded by many students and frankly, when I listen to CPA review explaining this topic, it gives me a headache. So I try to make, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible to you because this topic is covered on the CPA exam, covered in an income tax course. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, this is where I add value to your education, to your CPA preparation, where I go in depth. Unlike a CPA review course, I explain the material. I teach you the material. So if you're interested in, in supplementing your accounting courses or your CPA exam, I strongly suggest you check out my web. So this is where we end up the prior session. We looked at the uh, regular, reg regular taxable income plus the adjustment plus the rental. Uh, minus minus the net depreciation, minus the uh, sale on the asset, plus the incentive stock option, and we come up to alternative minimum taxable income before the exemption. And basically on the form, we are right here. The next thing we're gonna do is look at the exemptions. And here are the exemptions on the forms. You may, you may or may not see them, and this is for 2019. Those will change for 2020, 2021, 2022, but once you understand them, I don't think they're gonna change that much, but they will change. So in case you are looking at this, at, at this lecture in 2022, and you might be saying, this is an old lecture. Well, they might change the adjustments. Make sure you know how to follow, okay? So this is the exemption, but let me show you the exemption in, 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 in a, uh, where you can see them better. So for single, the exemption is 71,700, but you will start losing part of that exemption when your, when your AMTI exceeds 510,300. Married file and jewelry, your exemption is 111,700, but the phase out will start at 1,020,600. Don't worry, we're going to work an example. Married file and separately, this is the exemption, and the phase out will start at 510, actually 300, not 510,300. 5, 5, the phase out exemption, exemption is reduced by 25% of AMTI in excess of the income limit. Simply put, when you have a dollar, one dollar, in addition to 1,020,600, for every dollar you would use 25 pennies, 25%, okay? You would lose 25 pennies from this exemption. The best way to do is to work an example. Let's assume Marsh and Homer have an AMTI of 1,100,000. They're married, fired, and jointly. So the initial exemption for them is 111,700. But guess what? Marsh and Homer income, Marsh and Homer income, uh, AMTI, in excess of 1,020,000. Therefore, what we have to do, we have to compute the access and tw by 25% of the access, we will reduce this 111,700. So simply put, the 111, the 111,700 1, becomes 91,850. How did we do this? First, we'll find the difference. What's the amount that's in access? So let me just compute this. So let's see how much they are above the exemption. So this way we multiply it by 25%. Let me increase the size of this. And this is what you have to do on the CPE exam because you'll have the, the calculator given to you. So you just want to make sure you're comfortable with that. So 1,100,000. And you will deduct from it 1,000,000. 20,600, so they are 79,400 in access. They're gonna lose 25% of that. So this whole thing, this whole thing, because they're 17, um, this whole thing, this whole formula here, end up to be 19,850, and this is how much they lost, minus 111,700. Therefore, their, therefore, their exemption is 91,850 not 111,700, okay? Also, after the uh, after the deduction, after the, I'm sorry, after the exemption, you might have credits. Usually, most people don't qualify for those credits, AMT people, child tax credit, child independent care credit, contribution credit, because your income is already too high, so you don't really qualify for those. You might qualify for the adoption and the foreign tax credit. Those credits are available. So simply put, let's take a look at this picture again and do this on the form so basically, this was our taxable income. 
Uh, for this individual, for this example, 217, 245, they're married filing jointly, married filing jointly. Therefore, their exemption is 111,700. Do they qualify for the whole thing? Yes. Why? Because their income is way below the limit. So now we're, we're, what we're going to do, we're going to take this exemption, 217, 245, minus 111,700. Their AMTI is 105,545. Now we're going to multiply this by the tax rate. What tax rate? Well, if this, if line 6 is below 194,800, we multiply it by 26%. And it is. If it's above this amount, we multiply it by 28% minus 3,896. And those, you know, that number will change. But if we take 105,545 times 26%, our AMTI or our AMT tax supposedly is 27,442, then we have no credit on line A, therefore our uh, our AMT tax is 27,442. We compare this to our regular tax, our regular tax is 25,740, guess what, we do have AMT. As a result of the AMT, we have to include an additional $1,702 on our taxes. Now how do we add this from a form perspective? This 1,702 will go to form, schedule two of form, uh, 1040, 1,702, then schedule two of line, uh, of schedule two of line one, basically this, let's assume that's the only thing, 1702, so this is the total, then this number here will go to on your 1040 line 15, other taxes, 1702. So when I was in practice, it, you, you, when I was in practice, it, it went from 6251 to the 1040 directly. We did not have Schedule 2 back then. Uh, but the point is, oftentimes you have to explain to the client, it's okay, could you tell me where this, this 1702 came from? Because usually the client, they look at their 1040. That's what they look at. This is the this is Form 1040. Like, what is this 1702? Then you have to understand that it came from, usually, again, in the past, I would go right to the AMT schedule, but now you have to go to the Schedule 2 because they're trying to simplify the process, which is they make it, they have more forms. How do you simplify things by having more forms? But that's not the point. So it's coming from line one from your schedule two, and this is coming from 6251. Then the client sometimes they want to understand this. So so I you never complete 6251 in practice, actually. Um, the software does complete this this form for you, but it's very important that you understand how it works. Now in the next session, actually, I'm gonna complete 6251 in a form of a CPA simulation because when you learn, you want to learn, you have you want to have a strong base. And I will not be surprised if the CPA, if the AI CPA gives you an AMT simulation. It will be unfair. But hey, life is not fair. But I will I will work a CPA simulation with 6251 and hopefully by going through these series of lectures, you just put this AMT topic behind you and you tell them bring it on. I'm willing to take to take on it. In the next session, we would look at part four of five, which again, I'm, I'm planning to work an example of a C CPA simulation where you're going to have full confidence in answering these questions. As always, I'm going to remind you to like this recording, visit my website, farhatlectures.com, and don't shortchange your education or your CPA preparation. It's a lifetime investment. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.